Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Club Collab. I'm Max Jimenez and my co-host over here struggling with the mic still. I'm Ryan Overcash and I'm doing just fine. <laughs> what's going on, everyone? Hope you're doing well tonight. Tonight, I'm glad that you guys are here. Tonight, I have a very special guest uh, that I've known for quite a while. Uh, and man, every time I talk to this guy, he, he basically surprises me. I learn something every single time. Uh, when I talk to him and uh, you guys obviously know I titled this systems and processes. Now, here's the difference. A lot of people like to talk about systems and processes, but this guy actually breathes and eats and sleeps systems and processes. Uh, I got to peek in a little bit uh, into his uh, his uh, his business. You know, obviously, you know, knowing him for a while, he came in a little bit of sneak peek in the background of, of things that he's doing. Amazing stuff. Uh, legit investor, by the way, buying all kinds of stuff up that, you know, seller, seller finance, zero percent interest. Uh, but amazing, amazing investor out of Houston. So before we bring on Thomas Hayo, I want to give a couple announcements because I'm super excited tonight. Cause I think we, uh, Ryan, I don't think we've had anybody come on here and talk about systems and process. Have we? No, no, this is the first one. This is going to be awesome. I'm excited about it. Cause I want to learn too. Every time that you talk to Thomas, you tell me what you guys talk about. And I'm like, we yeah. got to talk to this guy. Yeah, 100%. So um, really quick, a uh, couple announcements is this is a live show. So ask your questions, share this with someone, um, and then and then make sure that, uh, you know, that you're commenting, dropping some fire emojis anytime that Thomas has something that, that impacts you that that's going to help your business. Uh, as well, Friday, this Friday, um, we're going to be doing a live Zoom call. I want to highly invite you. I'm actually going to uh, right now, put the uh, the link that way you guys can register in the comment section. Um, I want you to join us on Friday at 3 p.m. Arizona time. Uh, and send so that, it to your friends, too. Yeah, and send it to your selfish. friends. Uh, Leo says, my boy Thomas. Yes, Leo Aguirre is from Houston as well. But I just put the link on on uh, on the YouTube, uh, on in YouTube, excuse me. The, one, the people who are on Facebook, you'll probably have to go to YouTube. Or you can go to my Facebook and click on the link. But we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is sales, right? Which is uh, um, my my personal top 10 objections and rebuttals. Now, this is not your guru's objections and rebuttal, rebuttals. These are not something that came out of a book. These are actually things that after making thousands of calls, after going to hundreds of, of, of in-house appointments, these are things that I've run into consistently, and I want to I want to walk you not only give you the one liners and, and, and talk about things that you should say, but I want to break those down of and give you the psychology behind it. Right. The system behind it. Let's stick with that word. Right. We're talking about systems and processes. I want to give you the system behind of how you should use the 10 objections and, 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 and rebuttals. Uh, really excited about this. I've done this probably a couple of times uh, for our, our master class students, um, but I'm really excited about that. And then, Ryan, you go live uh, on Sunday? Sunday, 2 p.m. Arizona time. Everything wholesaling, uh, wholesaling 101, uh, full gambit of everything that's working for us right now, everything that's not working for us so you know what to do, everything in the middle. Um, we have access to, to Max, myself, but also, again, it's just going to be great. A great talk for everyone. So again, share it with somebody else. Let somebody else know as well who you think could uh, benefit from from um, going through it with us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. So without further ado, I want to bring on my very good friend. Oh, by the way, we're going to talk about this hat right here. A lot of people ask me about this movement. And before we get off this show, we're going to talk about this movement right here, right? Is they talk, I deliver. Today, you guys are going to find out why I wear this hat. There's actually a, a, a very, a very truthful meaning behind it. But without further ado, let's bring on my very good friend, Thomas. What up, man? What's up, man? It was a pleasure to be on. Hey, nice, what's man. cracking, Thomas? Yeah, I appreciate working, you, man. Getting things done. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, now, Thomas, I appreciate you, man, for being on. Uh, you know, like I was like you heard in the background there and backstage, you know, uh, I, you and I have, you know, obviously known each other for a while. Um, you know, you obviously came into a workshop when I was, you know, in, in a previous partnership. And and the first thing you said, like, Max, you have a lot of holes in your business. <laughs> Rightfully so. Right. Again, yeah. you know, uh, and I love that because I am a I am a learner. I am 
somebody that understands how to op work in the operator level, which we'll get into, right? The difference. Yeah. What is an operator? What is someone who's not? Um, but I want to introduce yourself, man. What, what market are you in? What do you invest mainly? And what's, you know, give us a little bit about who Thomas is. All right, guys. Uh, my name is Thomas Howe. I'm actually based out of Houston, Texas, and it's a location that I enjoy. I love it. And I'm a real, real estate investor. So I'm an actual buyer. So wholesaling, I got that into as a, my own deals. I wasn't getting a lot of deals from other wholesalers. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this as well. So I faced some obstacles and challenges. So I just hired coaches and Max was one of my coaches that taught me the sales process because I'm naturally an operator. That's the main focus. Yeah. And it took some time, a lot of effort, a lot of failures, a lot of punches, <laughs> getting punches in the face <laughs> to actually be an effective closer. And that itself is a different skill, which I did not yeah. possess. It was until I really came into the training from Max and his colleagues that I learned about this. Awesome, man. Awesome. And it, for sure, I, I agree with you 100 uh, percent is that uh, you are a, a real real estate investor, uh, you know, buying properties out there and also uh, a, a true operator. Right. When it comes to systemizing uh, so, uh, your business. Like I said, I got to I was able to do a sneak peek into your business. And it's amazing, man, what you built. Um, you know what? What I know uh, a little bit of your background. I know. Right. You came from the consulting business. Yes. Um, now, how does that tie in into you, like getting into uh, systemizing? Is there any correlation? Is that where you learned it, or how was that about that that you came into being able to understand and systemize all what you're doing now to this at the level that you're doing it? Well, I would say it's a combination of a lot of life experience that came together. Mm -hmm. A lot of it just come from you know I was an army officer, so I learned okay. a lot of leadership skills, how to systemize things, how to plan effectively and efficiently also look at a lot of risk analysis. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that the military has really taught me is the planning process. Mm -hmm. so when you're okay. really planning things ahead, you got to look at what is your end goal and figure out the in between. You know your, where you're going to start in your end goal. How do you figure out the middle and how do you make it efficient? And that's also like in the military, whatever mission or operations you go on, it's not about money. It's about people's lives. That yeah. So from that mindset of doing a risk assessment that carried over to my consulting career. And that's where in the consulting in the beginning, I didn't, I wasn't really, really formally trained. I knew the processes in the military. However, the management consulting in DC at the very highest level, you're looking at CEOs, CFOs, government uh, politicians working at that level. It's a different level you're working on. And I just worked 80, 90 hours a week for almost six, six and a half years and wow. learn the craft and master the craft. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned it. But systems itself, system, a lot of people say systems and processes. All right. Processes are within a system. A system is actually a combination of technologies, interfaces, data, people, and processes that go along with it. That's the entirety of the entire system. Got it. Okay. So, so I love that because I think, uh, you know, um, a lot of people try to like me, right? I just said systems and process, yeah. but I love how you worded that, right? Like the processes are in the system itself. Um, it's something that I, I never really thought about that. That's interesting that you said that because that makes sense, right? If you have a system, then obviously the processes is what's running that system, right? So the yeah. system could be sales. It could be marketing. It could be, you know, is that the right thing to say right there, Thomas? Absolutely. Everything okay. that has a system, like, for example, the sales process, that's mm -hmm. a part system of the sales side. Then you have dispositions. Then you have construction. All those have within processes, all those processes have small systems inside of it. But then when you look at the macro level, this is my big system. Mm. So this one is interferes with this, it interferes with this, and also ties into your vertical integration. That's if your objective is vertical integration, which mine is. Can you break that down a little bit? What does that mean, uh, the vertical integration? All right, for vertical, somebody vertical integration is like you're doing everything in-house. Mm -hmm. So that means like you have a call center. You have a lot of companies within a company, company. but it's all supporting your entire company. Like for example, myself, I was a buyer. right? And the challenge I faced was I wasn't getting enough deals from wholesalers. So what mm -hmm. did I do? I started a wholesaling operation, but the principles of wholesaling with the focus of getting my own deals. Right. So those are two separate businesses. One's a marketing and sales business. 
The other one is that you're an actual real estate investor. Then within that, you have the construction process. So right there, I built a built it building out a construction company. So yeah. that all ties into the vertical integration. I see. Of Got it. Then a property management company. Then everything supports each other, and you're not really outsourcing to other people. You're mm -hmm. doing everything in house. Got it. Okay. The, uh, um, Ryan, did, were you going to say something? I, I kind of heard. I don't know if you. Oh, no. I was just saying I, I, that just came up recently with Raul in a conversation, how they bought the call center. So I was just uh, saying stuff to myself. Sorry. It just came out. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So so because it's in it, I, I, that's awesome. So one, one thing that I see, uh, Thomas, and it is, is a big mistake that I see a lot of people that, let's say, that get into wholesaling because that's usually the, you know, the easiest, well, the simplest mm -hmm. way, excuse me, to get into real estate investing. Uh, but a lot of people don't start systemizing their business from the get-go because they think they either, you know, oh, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Um, and now I was at fault of that, right? Like I was just doing what what I knew to do, which is grind, hustle. But then, but, but ha um, what, what do you think about that? If somebody that's just starting out and it's not, it's not working on those things, I mean, <clears throat> is, do you think that they should, that somebody should do that from, from like the get go? Or what do you think about that? Well, it depends. It's like, okay. My, my view is anything that you do, you're building a system. It right. might not be inefficient. It might be not efficient. So the key thing is like, once you start, you guys start making it efficient. So whenever I started the company, mm -hmm. the first thing I looked at is the marketing data, data. It doesn't matter where you're in. You have to do a market study. What's the current market? What's mm -hmm. what the demographics? What's your objectives? So once you identify the data side, that is your strategy. Then you can build out your strategy. Okay, then you actually do it. All right, let me just do this manually. So mm -hmm. right there, you're working on your process. Mm -hmm. Then as you work on the a deals like you get a deal flow okay how can i incorporate technology into this to make it, it. so whenever i look at adding uh, technology i look at is it going to speed up my process will it reduce overhead mm. those are the two criteria i look at will it speed up my process and what's my overhead because overhead is the most expensive thing you have yeah so you want to always look at technology what is your main objective when you're incorporating it and yeah. the biggest challenge of any organization is always going to be people yeah. So you're building a company from the ground up. The key thing is like understand your market, which is the data side, your target audience market studies. Then from there, you got to look at your process. And once you say you have a process, you're getting deals. Now you got to look at your process, what you're doing, like how you're getting the deals. How can I make this more efficient? Because if I add in more people, that's going to be personalities that's at play. Yeah. So you want to start building out the technologies that you need and building the proper infrastructure to scale. Yeah. So my entire business, what I have is it's fully scalable. All I need is just put a plug in person in and all the processes are done. Yeah. And you're always going to continuous improvement, continuous refinement. But the key component, what you're looking at is when you're building a company, understanding your market, understanding your data, then from there, understanding what process, and then using the technology to decrease your time, your cost in that process using technology then finding the right people to build a business. Yeah, I love how you put people at the end. That's that's uh, that's an interesting thing because you know, <laughs> I made a we obviously the through through trial and error, right? And because we try to force and brutally try to build a business, we had we people first. Okay, you want to call? You want to dial? Let's do it. Let's get everything going. And then we started to be like, we can't continue like this. We need established systems, processes. And then what we found out, Thomas, was crazy is that once we did that, we found out that the people we had weren't the right people. Yeah. Right. So now now because you said, right, people at the end. So we're like, now we have to make sure now we have to find more people to fit those systems. And I like what you said, too, about um, does this improve on the technology? Because I think one thing you have always said that I learned from you is this technology can replace you know again your, your biggest expense is your overhead which mm -hmm. includes revenue uh what is it a uh, salary or uh people yeah right um which is crazy um and i think that happens to a lot of us in this business where we just get people to come in and we don't have no systems or, pro or processes or systems and then we put them in place and now we got the wrong people i mean ryan could attest to that he, he came in at that time right ryan <laughs> yeah i was actually thinking more of when we tried to bring people in for dispo before before i ended up moving over to dispo we're like, yeah, get in here. And we're like, well, yeah, figure it out. 
just just figure it out. You'll you'll be fine. And then we're like, this isn't the right guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's just a disaster waiting to happen right there. Yeah. It it was, yeah, it was. Um, and I think it's um it's something that people that are watching should actually pay really good attention to this because if you're just building your business, understanding what what Thomas is saying, our experience, it's like it's it's and I've always said this, if if it's something that that I could have done better was to actually start implementing all our processes to have better systems so then we can have the people that uh that can definitely um uh, fit right fit that system i want to talk a little bit about what you've built with your vas because man you have that systemized like for can you talk a little bit about um how did you how did you start that and and how did you get into that and then how how did it evolve to where it's at now well first thing when i looked at when hiring i looked at and i told a lot of my teammates i, I don't even consider them my vas they're my teammates they're my excuse me yeah, the virtual business. teams yeah oh, yeah virtual teams and the first thing I looked at is I looked at leaders. Where can I hire leaders? Who's yeah. ambitious? Who's young? Who's hungry? Right. That's what I looked at. So once you've identified those leaders, and you're going to go through a hard, good amount of them, but I was very blessed where the first guy I hired is still with me today, and it's been over three years. Wow. And he's making buku money working with me. And <laughs> he deserves it. You know? Yeah. And the thing is, like, if you want top-tier talent, you got to pay top-tier dollars. And then you gotta look at top tier dollars in the U.S. How does it compare to top tier dollars in the Philippines, Venezuela, Colombia, mm. Greece, e Egypt? Those are things that you have to analyze. Right. But before you even bring in the top tier talent, you gotta have your processes set. You gotta have you gotta train them. If you don't have processes set, guess what? You're gonna spend many hours training them. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I did is that I did. Uh, paid professional development for about an hour, hour and a half every single day. Mm -hmm. Then we did one-on-ones once I identify the champion. Right. Then performance-based bonuses. You get a base salary plus commissions. So, but you got to be, you got to do it gradually. It's just from any form of change management. You got to build people properly. You got to build them up. You got to invest time into them. If you're not willing to invest time into people, they will go away because the yeah. your most precious precious resource is people. Yeah. No matter what. No, that's true. And and I think uh one of the one of the um one of the one of the biggest mistakes, excuse me, for lack of better words, is what I see people do with virtual team members is they forget the human element of it, right? Like um they look at it as oh, it's just they look at it as like it's technology and it's not. <laughs> There's a human element when it comes to your to virtual team members, right? Right now I'm training uh I'm training 10, well, you know, right now it's at 10, 10 uh, mm -hmm. uh, virtual team members that are closers, right? And lead ma some of them are lead managers, some of them are closers. And something that the way uh, the way I'm training them today is very different than, than it was, you know, three, four, three years ago, right? right? Understanding now that there's a human element, there's a psychology element, there's an element of, you know, like you said, looking for those champions. Um, and they can be uh, produced from the virtual teams. Yeah. What, what I, I know one thing, um, you know, one thing that you focus on, which is really huge when you're systemizing your VAs is that or sorry, your virtual team is that you're looking for leaders too, right? You're looking yeah. to build leaders. Is that you You do that first or what? How does that system look like? You you build that first. Mm -hmm. Anyone that you hire, you want to bring on as one of your partners. And it's not like partner, meaning like you're not giving up equity mm -hmm. partnership in the business where they believe in you, where they believe in your cause. And what you're doing, and on top of that, you gotta reward them handsomely. Mm -hmm. So if you're not willing to pay the money, if you're really greedy, you're in the wrong business. Because at the end of the day, the money that people get, you want to put them in a position where it's very difficult to go anywhere else besides mm -hmm. if they go on their own. Mm -hmm. But we all know how when people go on their own, the challenges that you face, it's very challenging. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm a firm believer: is like, why don't you, at a young age, in your 20s or 30s. Why don't you work for someone that's already doing it? They're, they're not all the way up. They're not a beginner. They're like mid-tier, but not really high tier. Mm. But the mid-tier guys, that's really on the coming up. That's where you really learn the craft. Work with them for three, four years or just have an agreement. Say, I'm going to work for you for 24 months. Right. And after that, I want to go on my own. <clears throat> so that's one of the things I do with mine. If, it's, if you're virtual, hey, you close 40 deals. Then we have an out, out, out policy 
After 40 mm -hmm. days, you're either going to start your own company or you're going to help me on commercial developments. You have an option. Wow. But you're going to be out of the acquisition role. You're completely out. If you don't want to do either, you're out of the company. Mm. So you close 40 deals, you start your own company. You make money for yourself. Because at the end of the day, I want you to make money too. Yeah. But at the 36th deal they close, that's when I really go deep dive in training that person to be a business owner and how yeah. to think efficiently. Got it. Hey, Thomas, yeah. what happens when you have big time killer is awesome, closing deals left and right? Mm hmm. Is it hard for you to hard for you to to get them going on their own business? No, it's pretty easy, man. Because the thing is, like a lot of those closes, they're not also uh, business owners. They don't have the business mindset. They'll rather close. So then you offer, hey, do you want to work something out? Well, I can work on the back end operations for you. Then you just focus on closing. But it has to be a equitable split. Because if I'm going to break my back to build out my systems for you or build out system for you, then I need something on the residuals on the back end. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. And the thing is, like, making things efficient is very key. Even with data, like I was showing Max a while ago, how you could save tens of thousands of dollars just by cleaning your data before you put it into systems, before you put it into a dollar system. Yeah, it, it may, def definitely makes a difference. On that last list we pulled on North Carolina, our contact rate was really high, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like super high. Um, but, yeah, definitely – uh, uh i love that do you have anyone right now that's made that that cut for the no. for no not yet no. what, where do you see usually where it falls uh, or or where they just want to continue where they're at where do you where, where uh, do we see that at a lot of impatience you know mm. like people want to get it now they're thinking okay i'll do 10 15 deals then all right i'm going off they, my own they think they're ready at a at an early it's, stage it's okay. right? you know at the end of the day i'm not gonna hold anyone back yeah if you're gonna go you know, just let me know, be, be kind of like, Hey man, I want to start off on my own. Then you have my blessings. You know, if you're going to, if you want me to help you, then here's a link. Here's my Calendly. I'm billing you for this conversation. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool, yeah. man. No, I love that. Um, cause I always see your posts, uh, your VAs, they, they, they're pretty much running themselves, man. That's a trip yeah. to see, like, you know, <laughs> and, and I'll go ahead. It's it's great because they're terminating low performers themselves. Yeah, yeah. I showed Ryan the other day. I said, "You see the the gray the gray beat or the gray sound is playing." <laughs> that means someone's get someone's oh, heads rolling. Remember that, Ryan? Jaws or something? Something? Weird no, no, no. Playing. It was it was the gray. You remember the movie? Oh, the gray. The gray. That's the gray. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, some animal. <laughs> yeah. So it's where uh, with Liam Neeson and the yeah. He's, in, yeah, he's with the wolves and it's just it's just playing That's in the background. Hilarious. Like heads are rolling. <laughs> and I don't do the terminations anymore. Dude, that's crazy. You even have that systemized, huh? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Dude, that's so cool. Right? I know this is your area, right? You have any other questions on that or anything? No, man. I'm I'm just sitting back listening, learning here. So because that's what I what we got. I mean, me, I need to get better at, at systems and stuff. So Thomas, I may reach out to you offline a little bit, but uh, now I'm just listening and how you uh you know how you motivate and get your people working because I think um you know we're gonna be having some we're gonna have to start start working with some other people too. Uh, coming up here in the in the recent uh, near future. Absolutely. But one of the things you definitely look at is if you're a leader of the company, you have to realize that your job is to serve. You know, you're a servant. You're a servant by your personal values, popular ideas, and institutions bigger than yourselves. So this is a core principle that was taught to me by one of my mentors in uh, 2008, Colonel Parker, while I was in Iraq getting promoted from first lieutenant to captain. So he gave me like a junior officer uh, support development form. And that stuck with me for a very long time. When you're a leader, your job is to serve others. You know, and awesome. for us, we're some of our personal values and experiences and professional experiences, you know. And uh, the key thing is that we all have weaknesses. Well, our strength lies within the team. So yeah. when you have a good team, it's the people that you're serving. So. Yeah. If you're the CEO, your job is to be a servant to the people and focus on increasing the revenue and the bottom line of your company. Yeah. I love that you said that because, you know, um, and Ryan's here, he can attest, you know, there was times when um, when I could have went to, say, certain masterminds, certain yeah. trips, and I didn't. I was like, this is not the right time to do that. This, I need to be here with the team. We need to get back on track. I need to figure out what's going on. 
And I love that you said that because most people think just because they're either the owner of the company or CEO mm -hmm. or whatever that is that they don't have to, you know what I mean? Like they, they can just go and do whatever and they, they want. Um, and I actually, uh, like I said, I, I was the actual opposite. If I knew like if something's going on in the, where I'm seeing where we're not heading in the right direction and there's something coming up, that's getting put in, that's yeah. not even in, it should be in the forefront. And I want to, I want to ask you this talking about this specific subject, because a lot of people, especially in right, especially because wholesaling slash investment is very different than big corporations where you have a CEO, CFO, yeah. chairmen, board directors, all that stuff. And what I see a lot of this is let me help you get out of your business. Right. So, so completely like where you're, you go take vacations. Is there such a thing that can happen in what we do? I want to ask you that Thomas. Um, and it, I have a very hard time believing that because the thing is that no one cares about your business more than you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Too if you look at uh, Jeff Bezos, yes, he stepped up, but he still has a lot of influence. Mm -hmm. If you look at Elon Musk, the guy works 80, 90 hours. He sleeps in the factory. If the thing is like, most people are not cut out to be at the top. Yep. People don't know, understand the sacrifice. Once you find the right people, yes, you have a little bit more leeway that you could trust. But at the end of the day, if you deeply care about your organization, what you're building, then you have to be involved. Mm. You have Preach to. it, man. Preach yeah. it, man. Because there's gurus and that tell you, you got it. I'm going to teach you how to get out of it. <laughs> and yeah. And I'll tell you right now, uh, and this is something that's said in the soldiers, all that stuff, you know, when it, when it came to the military and I use a lot of military principles, like I look at even your staff, your staff really doesn't, you know, they don't care about how much, you know, what, you know, what they really care about is, do you care for them? Do you yeah. care for their success? Because they have food they have to put on tape. Are you looking at their benefit? So in the military, even when I was in the military, when I was making decisions in combat or anything, I had to make account for like, all right, if I make the wrong decision, that means I'm going to affect the mother. I mean, their mother, their father, their son, their daughter, their wife, their entire family. So when you look at from that perspective of running a business, when you're about to terminate someone, you have to look at, okay, look at all the people that are going to affect are you terminating just because of something that you failed on? Or are you mm -hmm. terminating because they're being not performing? Then you are you have you given the chance for them to improve? If yeah. you haven't given the time to make them improve, if they're just coming in and you ex put expectations like this is what you're going to do, and they don't go there without your coaching or mentorship or guidance, how are they going to succeed? Yeah. You're setting them up for failure. Yeah, that's powerful, bro. Yeah. Heck yeah. That's so true. Uh, Claudio said all the integrators, all the integrators are watching this right now. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. And, you know, me and Thomas, uh, we always laugh because like and we'll get a little bit into this movement uh, in a little while. And I think Claudio's probably have been, hasn't been watching your stories as well. Like we talk about it's the operator's turn, right? A lot yeah. of the, the, the rise the of the operators. Are, yeah, the rise <laughs> of the operators and, and understanding like. Uh, the gurus are starting to phase out their, 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 uh, what is it? Their great stories about how they came up are no longer impacting. <laughs> yeah. People want me at potatoes, Thomas. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Right now, especially with the market shifts, this is what's going to separate from the men from the boys. Jeez. I, like, love I hear all the time. A lot of people are complaining. They're hurting, but they're not making the money or the deal margins are smaller. Mm -hmm. Well, mine's still average about 17 to 25. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I yeah. love that. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's understanding. Um, well, that's the difference, right? Between, um, you know, somebody who talks about real estate, someone who, you know, who speaks theory compared to somebody who's actually still heavily involved. Right. Yeah. And shifting and taking the punches and, you know, and, and, and being able to identify where where the pivots need to happen. Right. Yeah. And, the, and I like that's why I asked you the question earlier, because. Um, you know, is there such a thing where you can check yourself out completely? Yeah. I don't think there is in this business, right? I, 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 I agree with you 100%. That's why it always trips me out when people push so hard to like, I'm going to teach you, pay my pay the $30,000 so I can teach you how to get out of the, <laughs> get out of the so, business completely. So this is one thing I do religiously every week. Yeah, at the end of the week, I do something what the Army calls the AAR, which is an after action review. 
yes, I'm talking a lot of references to military, but you know, that's one of my upbringings. So the after action reviews, like I look at, all right, what was our goal this week? Did we accomplish it? What went wrong? What could I improve? And how, how do I not repeat this again? Right. So if you do that every week, your company will Im- improve like half a percent every single week. Just yeah. by putting a simple principle of reflecting on what you did in the past mm-hmm. week and what not to do and how you can make it a little bit more efficient. Yeah. And that's uh-huh. how you really become very effective in your company by actually reviewing weekly. Right. You don't. Right. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think it's something you got to you pay attention to. Uh, Claudio says systems and processes equal scalability and consistency. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool, man. Um, I, I love this uh, because, you know, it's weird because people will always ask me, like, uh, you know, especially because I, I like uh, sales is like what everybody sees. Yeah. But, you know, Thomas, I've had many conversations with you and like you're like you like systems like some people don't know too much about about that on my side. Like they trip out when I start talking about <laughs> operations and and all this stuff. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about. Um, so I know that you, you you had a shift in your business and what what shifts have you made now with this market, obviously uh, being that. You're in tune. Obviously, we call I, I call it. Uh, you have your ear to the street, right? What yeah. What are some things that you were you did as far as like? Was there any? Was there a large pivot for you? Was there any at all? I mean, w- were you just business as usual? It's really business as usual, because I still follow the same data, the same metrics. The only difference is, you know, now it's it's a little bit more challenging to get deals compared to before. Mm-hmm. However, deals are still there. I'm still getting, actually. I just closed down property two days ago. Well, okay. So I'm still doing deals. I'm still mm-hmm. buying. And with that, you just got to change your margins. You got to change, okay, what's your cash on cash, what you're looking at. And this, if you're a real cash buyer. And on top of that, all the hedge funds that a lot of people are going over, over and all the people that are raving, guess what? A lot of those amateur investors pulled away. Yeah. And we're now in the relationship business. If you burned a lot of relationships when you started out, guess what? Guys like me don't forget. Yeah, I remember it's like because you try to charge me an arm or leg, you don't want to work with me and give me any meat on bones. Guess what? Now it's payback. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, that's amazing. That's funny you say that. Not funny, excuse me. That's interesting you say that because that's something we've been talking about, right, Ryan? Like we're we're kind of pride ourselves that we didn't uh, sell any deals to hedge funds. Uh, did we miss out on money? Possibly, but the relationships are still yeah. there, right? Like we can pick up the phone and call someone. And I saw, you know, after a little bit after COVID, where the the big prosperity wave came through, where people changed their whole business model yeah. just to uh, serve, right, the hedge fund, just to serve mm-hmm. that big machine. When knowingly that machine's that machine wasn't going to stay on forever. Yeah, right. They were coming in and and cashing out. And now, unfortunately, now I've seen some of those businesses. I don't know where they're at. Right there, I don't see the Lambos. I don't see the They're coaching now. <laughs> They're coaching you how to scale out of the business. <laughs> yeah, uh, Operation Repo in full effect. <laughs> yeah. yep. But it's it, you know it's interesting you say that. So so with us, I mean Ryan does a really good job. Ryan, you want to talk about the, your system for building relationships and stuff? Because I I don't have that side. Yeah. No, I think. Um... Yeah, it's really, Thomas, you kind of hit on it a little bit earlier. It's about being real. Um, it's about being honest, um, you know, asking the right questions and, and filling each other out to see exactly how, how we work together, you know, how we work, how each other works and how we can help each other uh, move forward. And sometimes it's a little bit of give and take. Um, you know, sometimes we we give, not say give away things, but we are a little bit less um you know strenuous on what we want and what we're asking because we want to build the relationship Mm -hmm. and basically like like lead by example so to speak like here here's how (laughs) here's how we like to work um we want to repeat business and max uses this term quite a bit and i say this all the time too now we're not trying to hit a grand slam with every deal people that are we're not going to work with you it doesn't work out it never does it's just a waste of time Mm -hmm. so know that if you're listening here guys we want to work with people who understand that it's about staying in the game helping each other out and everybody winning not just the buyer the seller sorry not just uh us and the buyer but also the seller too because we're solving problems for sellers 
Um, so really, again, I, I just I just be real. I, I am very honest, very upfront disclosure, set proper expectations and then follow through with those expectations. And in this business, it's not hard to stick out because a lot of people don't do that. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's crazy to see. Uh, we'll get to this question right now, but I want to add something to that. It's crazy to see sometimes when people want to JV with us. And one thing we started doing, Thomas, is on our on our form where you do with the deal submission, they must submit the agreement. Like yeah. they, they need to submit the original contract, right? Which it should be a standard practice anyways, because you don't know what they agree upon. And we'll see some people like trying to make fifty, sixty thousand dollars and it's a tight deal. Like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. you, you can take whatever you Ryan, Max, whatever you guys can make on top, go ahead and take it. And I'm like, Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, really? I don't even think we can get this <laughs> at all, but yeah, I'll go ahead yeah. and add my fee on top. Well, well, the funny thing is, even at the price that they have it under contract for, it's still tight, but oh, then they yeah. send it with a fifty thousand dollar <laughs> increase, you know, to JV with us. But uh, it's funny to see that. And this is the thing is like, as a business leader, a business owner, uh, you have to understand the power of a no. Yeah, like I was actually talking to that with my assistant today. I hired a you know, local assistant, she's helping me out a lot. And I was teaching the power of no. What you're going to learn is like, there's going to be a lot of people coming at you. Sometimes out of a hundred, you got to say no to 90 of them. Yeah. And Max, there you go, Ryan. That's your answer yeah, right there, Ryan. Right there. I was about to say, Max is getting on, getting on me with this quite a bit because I'm, 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 and I know, I know it. So it's not something that I'm not aware of. I got to get better of it. I have an old mindset of, I got to grab everything. Cause you never know. Right. I want to grab everything. Yeah. And he's seeing what I'm doing. He's like, bro, you're going to explode. Stop doing that. You're going to have to start telling people, no, follow this process. And if they follow the process, then we'll work with them. If not, we won't. And we do good for a little bit. Then I'll get a text. And I'm like, ah, oh, this one may be good. Hold on. Let me just check it. It takes me right off, you know, right back to where I was just going. And you got to frame it properly because at the end of the day, you're not trying to burn a bridge. You got to frame the conversation like, hey, man, I would love to work on you, but my hands are a little bit full right now. I don't think I'm the right person for you at this moment. Maybe yeah. in the future. And that's, that's what I like about that too, yeah. Thomas, is you're being responsible and helping them out too. So yeah. they don't think that, Hey, I'm counting on Ryan and Max to sell this deal and we're sitting on it for two days and haven't touched it. So again, I love what you're saying. Be upfront, right. Part of being um, transparent and being real with them and saying, I'm not the right guy at the moment for this one. Cause we have too much on my plate. Go ahead and run to somebody else. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love yeah, that. I, I've done that multiple times. Yeah. I just gotta, I gotta get over being scared of losing, losing stuff. Right. That's just part of it. You never, you never lose well, something you never had. Right, Max? Well, so, no, the thing is not is, is, you know, I probably Thomas to agree with this is that you may think you might lose this, but if you take on it, you might lose even a better opportunity. Right. So that's kind yeah. of how the way I, I look you. at it. So here's a prime example. In July, I had a deal under contract. It was probably going to be a well over a hundred K spread. Right. <laughs> and I had that deal snaked for me. And I was furious. I was pissed. And I was getting my lawyer involved and everything. And I had the private lender, everything on board. All right. It was good to go. Then I'm like, crap. Then that very week, I got three zero percent owner finance deals. And I had to put down payment. Mm -hmm. And when you ran the math, okay, I lost 100K, but I gained close to $700,000 worth of assets just yeah. like that at zero percent interest. Damn. So, so what are you better than occupy trying to go after the, the other guy? Not sure. just me. If I got that deal, I would have been in a bind getting those three other 0% deals. Right. So. Jeez, that's crazy. Uh, that's let's see. Yep. Love it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Leo wants to know what cash on cash are you buying in at, at in this market? Right now, I'm buying around 65% because that's what makes sense. Well, it looks like Max dropped off. I was like, what happened? <laughs> Disconnected. Yeah. All right. So when you say, so 65%, you're saying that's that's like where you're buying at? Yeah. Is that, is that what the question was? Okay. I didn't see yeah, because now. right now the interest rates are going up a little bit higher. Oh, yeah. A non-qualified mortgage where I looked at last time was about seven and a quarter. So it might have went up because oh. I heard it went up at 35, I mean, 75 basis points. Yeah. So with that, you know, as a investor, you know, you're looking at the cash on cash and how much it's getting hurt. So you got to really run your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, then you're going to really get screwed. And there's two ways you could play this game. You could play either an equity game or a cash flow game. Some people say, oh, don't do equity, blah, blah, blah. Dude, if you're going to hold for seven to 10 years, it doesn't matter what season is the industry. 
as long as your bills are covered. That's what matters. I I love that. That's a very good perspective. And for me, whenever I buy a house, I almost do a full rehab. I mean, like I change everything. And and a lot of my friends are saying, you're crazy doing that. But you know what? In Houston, we had frozen pipes over uh, last February, right? None of my pipes person because I changed the pipes up. I didn't go cheap. I look at future-proofing my uh, houses. And when you look at it in that angle as an investor, you're learning it for the long term. And then the, what's the great thing about the way I do it is in about seven, eight girl, years, I have a significant amount of appreciation and equity. I do a cash out refi, get that money back. Well, of course, yeah. after my first, I do two cash out refis, get that money back. Then I wrap the loan and do a solid finance. Now with that solid finance note, I take it to my banker and I do a notes receivable of money. So I get money up front right there. So basically I'm making money multiple ways by structuring the deal that way. Damn. You're getting paid more than once, man. Dang. I love that. That's, really... That's amazing, man. Um, let's see. Sergio says, for people that call back and leave voicemails, who calls those? Lead managers? Your lead managers? I don't have a lead manager. I have acquisitions. That's it. Okay. Acquisitions, co cars. Yep. There you go. It's, you got to put in the work. because <laughs> the, It doesn't make sense because you're looking at you want to minimize the amount of people they're talking to. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, Abraham says the mortgage depends on the loan and credit. I don't. I don't know. I might have jumped on late on your. You could. You could get a non-qualified mortgage. Yeah. Cool. Um. Really quick. So going back to sticking to our to a little bit of our topic here. I know. Um. What are some wh- What are some things that keeps you? Uh. You know. Obviously, organized and stuff. I know we're talking about quote unquote systems, but if somebody wants to start. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in it, you know, start with their processes, writing those out. Um, is there, is there like two or three systems that someone can start with right now to start laying that foundation and get them going? Before you work on any systems, understand your target market, understand your audience, understand your data. Got it. So what I did is like, before I even started, I pulled out all the demographic studies of each zip code. I studied each and every single, single zip code that I want to target where I'm buying because at the end of the day, I'm a buyer. Okay. You know? That makes sense. Uh, then I look at, okay, where, which markets are a lot of flippers going and where I could target that. That could be, okay, this is a market that a lot of flippers buy. This is a market that I buy. I personally buy. Then you could look at and understand that. Then not just that you got to look at other deck and uh, demographics and echo economic standards of each people. So if a person's only making like, Forty or fifty thousand dollars in a certain demographic, and another person's make make or a certain zip code, and another person's making like half a million in another zip code. Understand the level of communication with that type of people. Mm. You know, a person that went to high school communicates different from a guy that's a PhD in economics or something. Mm. So when you're com- communicating with those people, you have to understand. And if you're spending money on that zip code where you're not likely to get deals because of the current economic sense, you're just wasting money. Yeah. It, it's Thomas, interesting. Go ahead, Ryan. Sorry, I was jump in. Where no, would someone good. go? Like, like, so for some people who don't know, where would they go to find this knowledge? What are you looking up? Are you going to the Crawford report? Like what exactly are you looking up to find out? This Google.com. Just Google, huh? Google.com. Zip, the zip code. Look at demographics. Demographics. All right. There you you go. know, I can add a little, some, something to that, uh, Thomas. I think you, you're right about that because in here in Phoenix, there's a couple of suburbs mm-hmm. where we didn't do PPC. We didn't send we w- we wouldn't send postcards. Uh, Ryan, which would include Gilbert, Tempe, Mesa, and Chandler, because mm-hmm. we knew that we would be outspent by Open Door. Yep. We would be outspent by uh, Zillow and Offerpad, uh, because understanding that's a little different demographic than say west valley and north phoenix right um like they yeah so i i totally get what you're saying on that which makes a lot of sense we didn't actually go that granular to uh, we could have probably went even more gradually now that i think about it that you brought that up as far as having that conversation because you know you're right somebody that has a little bit more um uh, what is it called uh, education or you know they definitely speak a little bit different so and economic uh, power economic power exactly there that distress there's not going to be distress like if you're talking to somebody who doesn't have that for sure 
Well, well, the distress is there. It doesn't matter what community it is. There's distress. Right. It's getting the deal the way you're looking at. Yeah. yeah. Now, well, the li- likelihood of a person that is making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, they're behind on their payments. Yeah. For them giving a sub two, they look at the risks. Okay. Got if it. You, what if you don't pay my mortgage? Then you're going to really, I'm going to get screwed for makes however sense. I'm going. Yeah. So sometimes they'll rather say, okay, I'll take their short sale. Yeah. And get that and just try to get that wiped out. So I don't have to worry about that. That's not looming on my back. Mm hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, Claudio's got a good question here for you. For the long one it says, Thomas, as you know, it takes time, takes time and money to build systems and processes as well as to understand your own business and the process. So what's 2020, 2023 look like for those who didn't put in that work in, in this year? W2, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ryan hit the ball right there. <laughs> but if, the thing is, like, you have to adapt as an effective leader. You have to be adaptive of your current and future uh, operating environments. So if you don't understand the current operating environments that we're going through, and right now our operating environment is going pretty rapidly, what's going on with interest rates. Yeah. So you have to really, really develop yourself. Yeah. You have to understand the craft. You have to learn the craft because the processes and all that stuff, that doesn't really matter because if you don't know how to talk to people, if you don't know how to close deals, that is the bread and butter of your company. None of all that marketing analysis, none of that matters if you don't develop yourself. And that's what I failed in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I did not take the time to study the craft of sales. Yeah. You know, what I did is like, okay, as a logic person, hey, you're behind on your payments. Oh, right. Let me take over your property. Mm-hmm. And I right. made that mistake. <laughs> logic it makes, makes sense, sense, right? Like, hey. Yeah, it makes sense. Just yeah, fine. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, how Ryan sold when he came into work with us. <laughs> Gear for closure. Why are you not selling to me? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I'm like, I'm the end buyer. I'm going to pay more than this guy, but yet you sold it to him for cheaper. He What's understood me. That's why. <laughs> yeah. So, no, that's that- a good point. What's a good point? Uh, real quick, before I didn't mean to interrupt you, Thomas, but the way you want to look at that yeah. is is because of the interest rate. You got to think, right? The interest rate is going to bump up here a little bit more here coming soon. So guess what? It's going to impact the flipper. So then the flipper is going to be like, oh, the interest rate went up. We need to now adjust even more now. So you're not going to. So then and then now you got to do what Thomas just explained is understand that and pivot. Not on not on your system and process, but on your skill set, because you, you, you got to pay attention to those things that if that, uh, you know, I just wanted to add that. I think that's a really clear example of what's happening right now. Absolutely. Yep. And that's why right now I'm really going, pushing really hard personally for the 0% interest model. I'm pushing that hard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I know you had told me this a while back and I got to credit you first for talking to me about this. And I didn't want to, I didn't listen. Right. I was like, oh, I'm going to wholesale. And then uh, Cash Money Mike came in and, you know, that guy's, that's all he does is seller finance. And so putting those two together, it's, it's, it's a must. It's a skill that you must, uh, that you have to pick up. So. Um, but no, that's a, that's a good question, Claudio. Cause, um, I think uh, I went to an event. Um, when was it Ryan? It was uh, like a couple, like in July, maybe June. When you right? went to the first, where'd you, the which wholesale one talk about? Wholesale the wholesale sh- yeah, that was July. Yeah. So we went to, we went to an event, wholesale sharks and you're going to trip out on this Thomas. <laughs> and so there was about these guys, like they would pack the event and, um, there was a, I yeah. kid you now, there had to be at least five to 600 people, I think, right, Ryan? Yeah, at easily, least. Yeah. easily. And so gave, he gave me like five minutes to speak. I went on stage and, you know, I talked a little bit about, um, first of all, I said, what's up to everybody? And then I said, hey, how many of us know, like, what, how many of us know or seen that something's happening in the market? There's, 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 I didn't know, right? I didn't say what, I just said, but there's a shift happening. Thomas, I kid you not, yeah. out of that 500 people that were there, like eight or 10 raised their hand. That was it. Okay. And check, and then now check this out. This is where you're going to probably like this. I said, yeah. I go, wow. I said, only eight people raised their hand. I said, this whole room, there, this whole room, your hands should all be going up. And I'm going to tell you why is because if it doesn't, half of this room or more is no longer going to be here in a couple of months. You're going to be back working with Ryan just said your W2. And I said, but let me help you out. So then so 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 you can get on back on track here. Cause yeah. and then then I asked again, everybody raised their hand after that. Fast forward to last month, went to the same event. How many people do you think were in that in that event? 
the same event. Fast forward. 150? <laughs> no, bro. Under probably a hundred people, bro. 100, wow. 120. By the time I spoke, like 50. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is where, you know, as a very effective leader, the only thing that is constant is change. You know? And if you don't understand that, the metric that you should only matter, the only me metric that really matters is effectiveness. So constant is change. You got to constantly change. Mm -hmm. And the only metric is how effective you come. So if that means you need to increase your skill set, this is where right now the separation between what I said, the men from the boys, if you don't have the skill sets that you developed in the past few years, or if you're not really developing your sales process skills, yeah. your operation skills, guess what? You can get eaten alive by bigger guys or yeah. a small operator like me. Yeah, yeah, no, I was gonna say even not even a bigger guy, just just a small yeah. operator that you know that knows how to move and maneuver, move and maneuver, right? It's not going yeah. to, uh, yeah. <laughs> what is uh equal <laughs> equal payments equals no interest? <laughs> what? Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll make you sixty equal pay sixty sixty yeah. equal payments. That's true. Absolutely. That's true. That equals no interest. At Claudio's I next comment. <laughs> I know he's like. A lot of people are going to be swimming naked in 23 or working at El Pollo Loco. <laughs> I'll be I'll be going to Pollo Loco, bro, getting me my order. But <laughs> What I want to bring up is like if you look in the past 12, 13 years, we had a crazy bull run. Yeah. Right oh, now. Bro. You could throw a rock and land a deal, bro. <laughs> exactly. Right now. Hey, a lot of the buyers are gone. You know, oh, yeah. right now, a lot of people are afraid. So one thing about the economic, if you don't understand economics, is the uncertainty that's going on right now. Yeah. When there's uncertainty, there's opportunity. What is that? When there's chaos, there's opportunity. But are you in the position to take the opportunity? Are you positioned well? And this is where your skill sets, how effective you are as a person in understanding your business as a whole. That's what matters. Yeah, no, that's so true, man. That's a, that's definitely on point right there. Uh, Gabe says, "Oh wait, not that one." Ryan, Gabe says, "What do you know about the Cromford report, bro? You don't know nothing about no, that." He's over there calling <laughs> me out, bro. Come on, Gabe. Come on, Gabe. Uh, he says, "No one heard you." I don't know. I'm not sure what he means by that, but um, so but but I do. Uh, I love that. I I think it's uh something that uh, gurus don't talk about, right? That's why you created, and I love this this uh, when you and I linked up after you know obviously I left. The partnership, I won't get into all that, but we talked for, you know, you were like, you're, you're pretty much like there, bro, pushing me on. And I'm very grateful for that. And you started talking about, you know, the operators taking over, right? Because things yeah. were changing and, uh, and things were going separate, definitely a different way, uh, which they are, right? We are, we're here now. And uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, uh, they talk, I deliver. How did that, I want to talk a little bit about that because, you know, uh, I was sharing with you backstage, man, that. I love this hat. It's one of my favorites hat. Uh, you can ask Ryan. I, I wear this hat more than anything because it's got a, 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 a truthful meaning behind it. And it's great quality, by the way, too. Really yeah. comfy. Ryan don't know nothing about that, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know nothing about that. I got go to go to earn, Texas. baby. No, nah, it's I'll earned, be there, baby. Bro. I'll be there. I'm taking, hey, I'm in your master class. So all those that don't know, get in Max's master class. You can get one of the hats. <laughs> And so uh, you'll get one, bro. You'll get one. When, one day you'll get there. <laughs> so you you you, re you tell me about it. I saw your logo and stuff. What what? Um, I know there was some motivation behind it, obviously. But <coughs> give us a little bit inside of the movement. They talk, I deliver. Well, a lot of it just came down to. <coughs> excuse me. It just came down to it was a collaboration between a friend of mine. He we talked about it, we joked around it, man. All these people talk, but they don't deliver shit. You know, we talked about it. Like, they talk, I deliver. <clears throat> and the thing is, like, as operators, your main focus is to get the end result. Mm -hmm. you know, deliberate planning will always enhance mission accomplishment. If you're not deliberate it. what you're planning, then you're not going to accomplish the mission. So a lot of people just run their mouths and talk. And I went to a lot of speaking events. I went to a lot of conferences. I went to a lot of trainings. And I signed up for some trainings as well. A lot of these guys talk the big game. But when I ask them detailed questions of issues that I have in my problem, they couldn't answer. Mm. So if you're a big operator like this, what you're talking and claiming, well, you're, you have very poor delivery or I, I either have too high of a standard. Yeah. And that's the thing about from the military, 
you know, you got to execute. Yeah. You can't talk because at the end of the day, it's about lives at stake in business. Guess what? It's lives at stake because it's your financial health that matters. Yeah. If you can't deliver on what you hire someone to do, what that, what kind of person are you? Yeah. So that's where for me, I don't take on things that I'm not going to deliver. I'll yeah. say, hey, I'm not the right person for you, but I might be able to refer you to someone else. I love that. Yeah. That's a high standard, man. Honestly, that's a really high standard in that. And that's one thing I admire about you because, um, you know, and you're always, uh, what is it? Uh, holding me on check, right? Like, Hey, you're always sending me DMS and stuff, which I appreciate because even though, um, I have really hardcore, uh, core values, right. That I hold like really high standards to. Um, but then that's what you just said right now. And I like that you use the military reference because you're right. Like if most people thought about it that way, that, uh, cause Ryan actually is, is, was actually, um, what is it? A, um, a, a, ca a casualty of that. Right. And I think, you know, you paid somebody quite a bit of money, right, Ryan, to deliver on what, you know, I mean, I don't know if you want to get into that or not. Um, yeah, I like, uh, I don't want other people to have to go through it. I think I was talking to somebody earlier or yesterday, Emilio, one of the, one of the guys I was reaching out to, I spent uh, 30 grand on a, a package, uh, for real estate that again, my fault, all 100% my fault. So let me first put that out there for not looking into it deep enough, not understanding and not being aware. I was young. Again, not an excuse. Um, there's people younger out there killing it. But uh, I was sold the goods, man, of, hey, all you got to do is buy this uh, education and you're going to be able to make this like you're saying. It was 30 grand. Your first deal, you make that back. That's how it was sold to me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, I'm going to do a deal. So no no biggie. I'm Ryan Overcash. I'm going to do a deal. And uh, no, oh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't do anything. I, I actually, I don't even know if Max even remembers this. He knows about it, but it kind of happened twice. The first time it was 2010. So I tried to get in real estate back in 2010. It lasted like a year. I just fizzled out. Nothing happened. I spent the money. Then I tried back again in 2019, and that's when I finally connected with Max and Steve. But anyways, yeah, man, um, you got to deliver because uh, th those people are still at the forefront of my mind that got me to buy that. But really, to be honest with you, I try to make it as a good thing. All A lot of my motivation to helping other people is so they don't do that. I help them so they can actually get deals done and learn the business, not just spend yeah. money and, and, you know, tell their family, sorry, I have no money. And, you know, to add to that, you know, that's good that you have ownership, but they're also, they're partially to blame because they're selling you a dream. Yeah. And you and I know anyone that a lot of the people that pay into a coaching mm -hmm. program, if they don't execute that sign of the content, the information is good if you're providing. But for me, I tend to care a lot. Because mm -hmm. the success of whoever I coach is a reflection on me. Yeah. Because when they yeah. succeed, I succeed. That I fulfill my obligation. But if they're not meeting me halfway, where they're not working for me, I'm like, hey man, I'm doing this for you. How come you're not executing this? Then I'm gonna say you're holding accountable for this. This is not my fault. It's on you. Yeah. I deliver what I said I'll deliver, but you're not delivering what you signed up for. Yeah. So it goes both ways. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Good point. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. And I think just to add to that, man, it's like, um, you know, we, we we tend to think like this community is 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 big and it's not It's small, like stuff will get passed around. And that's the other thing, too, is, yes. is that it travels. Right. Whether it's negative or positive. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful in my experience. And that's begin just because I hold I have really strong core values that I hold on to dear and near to me that help me and guys like you, Thomas, guys like Ryan, that I, you know, that I need to maintain some, uh, my credibility, you know, build the relationships. Like, so I've gotten, I mean, like today was a crazy phone call talking to like a professional boxer, bro, that got introduced to me. I'm like, yeah. wow. Right. Like if I would be doing the opposite, like I wouldn't be on that phone call. And now we got a zoom call that's going to happen on, on Thursday. That's awesome. Like that, 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 yeah, that's crazy. So that travels. Right. And, um, and the, the, the other thing too, is, uh, what you're saying, one thing that I do, uh, when somebody wants to come to the master class, as I always tell them this, like, look, Tom, uh, look, if you think that you're just going to pay to get better, you're already, you're, you're already automatically disqualified. You're not, yeah. you're not getting on the master class. If you're not going to be able to put the time, the effort and the energy for you to get better and you think you're going to pay and then basically say, Max, this didn't work and you didn't put the effort, like, don't even sign up. You're disqualified. Um, and I tell people that up front because this does take work. You know, you're, you're right. It takes work on both sides. Right. Not just one side, one side to deliver the other side to put in the work and the effort. 
Yeah. And that's one of the key things you got to look at. It's like, dude, if you're going to spend $30,000 on some kind of coaching, if you're not willing to put in the effort, why even do it? Like, I just recently bought another uh, mastermind where I'm heavily focused on commercial, Mm -hmm. commercial construction from the ground up. Do you know how many hours I'm putting in every day? I I'm starting it for almost an hour to hour and a half 50 to yeah. just really understand that craft in depth. Cause I'm the guy that I'm not going to execute anything unless if I have a good understanding, I don't have to have 100%, but this is a three to four year plan of mine. So I'm mm-hmm. planting the seeds right now to execute yeah. three to four years. Cause I know I need to get my finances to a few million dollars cash on hand to do what I'm doing. Yeah. So you got to start way ahead before you execute because that's what a part of your craft. Because when you're crafting, you're building those relationships with bankers and you're asking for like a $10 million line of credit where they'll fund your construction project. And on top of it, you work for a guy for free that will vouch for you or sponsor for you. That relationship with the bankers matters. Priceless. Yeah. And if you're not building that today for a plan that you plan on doing five years from now, Five years now from from now, you go to the banker, they'll laugh at your face. They'll say, "Get take a yeah. hike, buddy." Wow. But if you, if you start building it right now, five years from now, hey, John, I need ten million dollars in line of credit to work on this project. Okay, here you go. Boom, done. Of course, there's a little bit yeah. more to that. You had a performer. Oh, right, right. And all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we, we get the point of as far as just you build it, yeah. that reputation. Yeah, the gist. Yeah. But no, but but that's why I love that, you know, when when I started seeing that you were doing this, they talk, I deliver. I related to it right away because I'm like, man, that needs to be talked about. That needs to be uh, brought about. Uh, and so, yeah, I told you this thing's like a conversation starter. And I always tell the story like people are intrigued by it because they're, you know, it's something that you don't hear a lot these days. Right. It doesn't like stuff don't have a lot of meaning right anymore um and so what's that it doesn't have a lot of meaning because when you hear wear this you're holding yourself to a higher standard yeah. you're forcing yes. yourself yes and 100%. that's more self-imposed mm-hmm. yeah Anything else. yeah self-check uh but yeah i always like i said i always tell the whole the, the story i even tell them uh one time when the the a guy on ig uh wanted to wanted a hat and right and yeah. and uh I said, well, it, I said, you have to ask. I, I, I sent him to Thomas right away. <laughs> like, you got to ask Thomas. Thomas is like, bro, this is earned. Can't give it to you. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it has a very strong meaning, right? And I, I'm totally behind the movement. Uh, I support it 100%, right? They talk, I deliver. Uh, it's a movement that I that I got behind and, and push really hard. So, And it's the crazy thing is not only in the real estate community. It's also going into the fitness community. Dang, it's also okay. Going in- into the e-commerce community so it's slowly going to different communities nice i love that i love that uh leo said uh what what we were talking about earlier thomas it's called relationship seeds so cool man um this has been this has been great bro is there anything that you can um talk a little a little bit you know give the people some knowledge uh you know as far as things to look out for in these next um, you know these next coming up months i know we're I know we're probably going into the middle of the ice storm here pretty soon with with real estate. Maybe I don't know, right? I'm just kind of regurgitating here. Um, but is there anything you can uh, um, give people to look out for? Maybe people that just are coming into the into the industry. So one thing is like every market itself is different. You know, for yeah. example, Texas, especially Houston, we're not getting a big effect as opposed to Florida. So every location is very unique. Understand your market. That's the number one understand the people that are buying there and even during downturn people are still buying so it doesn't matter so if you're a hardcore investor it doesn't matter what cycle in the real estate community is you're still a player in the game and when you're looking out in the future what i would really really focus on is look at yourself look at building your skill set because the sharper you become the better more effective you'll be at whatever operations you focus on you got to always read, exercise, think, and adapt. I love that. That's dope. Yeah, that's a great advice. Uh, Jared uh, is asking for the hoodie, brother. It's earned, brother. There's no, <laughs> there's no, there's no e-com store where you can buy it. Sorry, man. <laughs> you want to tell him? You want to tell him, Jared. Thomas? <laughs> Jared has <laughs> actually been uh, pushing me some deals. So, uh, oh, okay. there we go. Hundred thousand dollar deal that I was working on with a flip. 
Uh-huh. It's from Jared. Jared Solid, man. I, I love Jared. Oh, okay. Awesome All right. Dude. There you go. Jared, Jared, uh, Jared uh, uh, he, he, he delivers. He doesn't just talk. <laughs> but that, that was a big risk that I was going to face because it's an actual rehab I would have to do. Mm, it would have it. It taken about a good four or five months, but I'm happy I didn't do it. But the economics that just went down. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, with it. but that goes back to understanding yeah. what, what's going on, right? Because what we're seeing, even us, like when we're out, um, you know, when we're sending out deals, excuse me, if it's a large rehab, it doesn't matter yeah. if it's if it's at 60 cents on the dollar, like they're not touching a large rehab no. because of the uh, depreciation that's hup- happening month by month. Right. Yeah. But the thing is that if you're not in it, how are you supposed to know that? So but yeah. you understood that and you you might you probably saved a lot of money not getting into uh, the deal. Absolutely. Because the holding cost right now has increased to almost uh, two months now. Whereas before it was flying off the shelf. Yeah, yeah. So when I actually look at the numbers, I'm happy that I didn't get that deal. Mm, right, right, right. That makes sense. That makes sense. At that time, it would have been a great deal. But right. now, in <laughs> retrospect, you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're like, I'm glad I didn't do it. So yeah. cool. Let me just check, see if there was any. I don't think we had missed any questions or anything. But man, this has been awesome. Uh, Ryan, you got anything else for Thomas? I know Thomas has been kind enough. We're, we're a little bit over an hour here. But man, this has been great. Um, yeah, Thomas, love a lot of stuff you said. I even took some notes while I was uh, listening to you. Um, favorite one, deliberate deliberate planning. I like that. Yeah. So love that. Love what you shared. I love how open you were um, about what you're doing in your business, how it's helping you, and how every one of us can take a piece of what you're doing, implement it in our business, and, and level up. So yeah. appreciate that, man. Appreciate you being on the show too, brother. Yeah. What well, I'm going to – yeah, I appreciate it. What I'm going to do, Thomas, is what we do always on the show before we end it. I know you kind of dropped a little bit of encouragement earlier, but just think about some positive you want to leave the people. I'm going to I'm going to bring you back right now. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to while we finish the I'm going to make a couple announcements and then I'll bring you back on and win the show that way. OK, so I'll bring you right back. All right. Cool, guys. Amazing. I told you. I mean, Thomas is man. That guy is uh uh, very systematic, very methodical, mm-hmm. very uh, doesn't use a lot of words. You notice that, Ryan? Yeah, seriously, right? Calculated yeah. with what he says, knows what he's saying, knows what he needs, knows what he wants. Like very, um, that's a good way of saying it, man. He doesn't use a lot of words. He's- oh yeah, no, he doesn't use a lot of words. Calculated words, and the words yeah. he uses are actually, uh, it's uh, it's what matters, right? At yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. So, I hope you guys all enjoyed the show. This was amazing. We're gonna bring Thomas back on just for just for him to give us one positive uh, wording of encouragement for you guys. Uh, but before we do that, I want to make sure that uh, if you guys didn't hear me in the beginning, I want to give an announcement Friday. I highly encourage you. I dropped the link in the comment section in here in on YouTube. Um, Friday, we're going to go live on a Zoom call, 3 p.m. Arizona time. Uh, that way you all can join us. We're going to be talking about, again, uh, the sales, uh, w- uh, something we use in our sales system, which is top 10 objections and rebuttals. Uh, not your guru's top 10 objections and rebuttals. <laughs> we're not talking tacky, gimmicky. <laughs> we're talking about the things that work right now in real life, things that we're seeing, things that we're running into. Um, and not only are we going to give you the actual sayings, the, the liners, we're going to talk about the psychology behind it and the purpose behind it, which is the systemized part. Right. I think that's very important. And a lot of sales trainings, they usually just want to teach you tactics and they want to teach you one liners, but they don't teach you the psychology. They don't teach you the mindset behind why it needs to be said this way. So I want to hi- uh, invite you if, uh, if if you miss this, go to my Go to my Instagram, send me a DM, and I'll shoot you the link straight forward so you can be on it. And then, Ryan, you'll be on on Sunday. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, sir. Sunday, 2 p.m., Arizona time, everybody. Everything and anything regarding wholesaling. Wholesaling 101, um, going over, again, everything from finding leads, mindset, qualifying leads, finding the buyer, uh, title companies, uh, stuff that we're running into right now that we we've learned on, stuff that's working for us right now. So anything and everything with wholesaling, I want to help you tune in to, I'm sorry, Sunday, 2 p.m. I promise you it's better than watching a football game. Yeah, let's go. All right, Thomas. you Sure. Uh, this is something that uh, I want to really uh, emphasize a quote from my mentor, Stephen Parker, when I was in the military, Colonel Stephen Parker. Uh, just think about this. Successful organizations consist of committed individuals driven by a common attitude. They're positive professionals 
responsible for everything, <clears throat> responsible for and accountable for everything in their charge, driven by positive outcomes and capable of continuously finding ways to win. I hope that helps. Remember, they talk, I deliver. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, everyone. Have yeah. a good night. I appreciate yeah, that. Thomas. Let's go.